634, and I am joined by Councilman Flynn and Councilwoman Vaccaro. First, we'll get started with uh, comments, suggestions, petitions by residents in attendance regarding issues not on the agenda. Thank you. Come forward. I'm Dale Friends, 511 West Minor Street, representing Friends of Everhart Park, Friends of Marshall Square Park, Friends of Hopes Park, and Friends of Barclay Park. I'm not quite sure why we're not on the agenda, but that's okay. We're not on the agenda. And so um, um, uh, we're providing this for information. And um, I think it's timely because the uh, public works is looking at a new mowing contract for next year up an RFP. So um, basically, uh, I think you've heard this from Keith Kurowski before, but um, the, the, the friends groups, are looking to formalize the leaf mulching that takes place or that has taken place in a couple of parks in the, over the last couple of years. And um, the, the proposal basically is to reduce the number, number of annual mowings in the parks, just the subject parks, not the little ones that aren't part of this, and, and, um, and the borough sewer plants from 25 per year to 21 per year and use the savings to pay for two additional or for two leaf mulchings in the parks during late November to mid December. So we're looking to this to be as close as possible um, to be uh, um, uh, financially neutral. Um, so that um, so what I've done is from the current mowing contract, and I know this is only the current mowing contract, but um, um, these are the, the uh, in the second column, the, um, the cost per mowing that we incur, and then the savings per site by eliminating four mowings. And they'd be like at this time of year where um, the parks get mowed whether they need it or not once a week, you know, and, and when, when the grass slows down, they don't need it. And so, um, so that savings then can be um, rolled over to pay for the cost of leaf mulching and, um, and that would be two mulchings. And we're estimating that it costs four times uh, as much to mulch the leaves as it does to mow them, just because they go over them two or three times and they go over them more slowly. Um, and so anyway, we end up with a total of $7,700 in additional costs for leaf mulching. And so we have a net increase. It's, it's almost a wash, but it's, it's like $300 more. And so, um, conclusions, it's near a break-even proposal, um, but beyond the numbers, um, you know, we've all heard about this, but um, mulching the leaves in the parks enriches the park soils uh, and creates more sustainable ecosystems. If we harvest all those leaves, the poor trees um, um, have, have lost all of their nutrients. Um, and, and so in, in a forest type situation, it's a very stable situation. In fact, the, the soil gets built up. Whereas in our parks, when we haul all the leaves away and don't put anything back, we're really depleting the soils over, over a period of time. Leaf mulching also reduces burrow costs by, eliminate, by eliminating the need to rake, collect, and transport the leaves from the park. And so even though these are the pure, you know, outside contract maintenance, cost, what I've not built into this because it'd be pure speculation, would be how much it actually costs the borough to rake its own leaves and to load them into trucks and haul them somewhere. So um, the big issue, though, um, is the quality of the leaf mulching. And um, we know that our current contractor um, doesn't have the equipment to do it. And, and so last year, we, we the Friends of Everhart Park, try, tried to get them to, to, um, to mulch, and they ran through it once, and it was 
just a waste of time because all they do is they blow leaves from one row to another. Um, they're not chopping them up and and um, um, and letting them break down. Um, their side discharge mowers just um, aren't effective. And so um, the Friends of Marshall Square Park has for the last couple of years um, contracted with Andrews Landscaping who does have the equipment and does have the experience to do it. And so um, Friends of Everhart Park hired them just for, for the second mulching um, uh, in, the, in the fall. And it was an enormous success. The leaves are gone, they don't blow around. And um, it was welcomed by the neighborhood and it, the park looks great and we're, we're doing the right thing as far as the environment is concerned. And so we recommend that the leaf mulching be a separate contract from the, the public bid um, mowing contract. And I don't know how that works procurement wise, um, but um, it's for two reasons. One's, one, to assure that we get the right kind of contractor and so that somebody like Andrews knows that they can bid with a real price and um, um, or not bid at all. Ideally, we would just hire a, a, a landscape contractor with, this, um, with these qualifications or have some other form of RFP. Um, but then also, we don't want to lose the competitiveness of our regular uh, mowing contractors, you know, who, um, you know, are used to mowing at 40 miles an hour and, you know, rip through the parks and, and do it for half the cost of a commercial uh, uh, mowing contractor. So anyway, these are the numbers. It's kind of a follow up to, to, to what we had talked about before. And um, I hope that Public Works will um, uh, incorporate these ideas into moving forward. Um, if there's any language that's required for defining what leaf mulching means, um, um, uh, we'd be happy to assist with that. Um, so if there are any questions, you'll have to just think about them and not ask them to me. <laughs> Council, any questions? Uh, Hey, Jeff, you can comment on Jeff Bytel, I'm the uh, president of Friends of Marshall Square Park. Uh, just to give a little historical context, um, Dale came to me uh, about a year or so ago and said, hey, Jeff, uh, how did you guys get that done over there in Marshall Square? And basically about three or four years ago, out of pure frustration with what Dale said, is that the, the lawn mowing contractor goes through the park at 40 or 50 miles an hour with the inappropriate uh, equipment and doesn't mulch the leaves. And they were all blowing out of Marshall Square, covering people's sidewalks. And this was continuing even after the borough stopped collecting leaves. And I was personally told that I was supposed to bag all of that and put it out for collection. And I just said, no, that, that's, that's unacceptable. So essentially, we took it upon ourselves, we have the funds, we hired a private contractor, and with the right equipment and with the dedication to do the proper job, it has been marvelous. We don't have leaves blowing all over the neighborhood, they're all being cut up properly, and they're returning the nutrients into the soil, enriching the soil, and you know, we are all for the borough trying to do this in the other parks that have a lot of trees, but I gotta be honest with you, if it's done in a manner that is not effective, Marshall Square Park will just hire a private contractor again because uh, you know we, we've had great success with the person that we hired because we knew they were competent and they were dedicated to it. So you know that's that's just our take on it. But we hope that you guys will you know embrace this idea, put together a bid for this, the, the bid documents that actually get someone who is dedicated to it, has the right equipment, and, and will do the job correctly. So it's a benefit to the parks and the trees. These, tre these old trees need these nutrients. Thank you. Mr. McCoy, now let's prompt this a couple questions. Mr. Vitel, please stay up there. The, uh, uh, the Andrews a mulching company that you guys used at Marshall Square Park. Yes. Did the director of public works vet that 
company and make sure they had proper insurance to protect the borough? No, no. Did the, did the public works director do it? Because you're not permitted to do anything on borough property without borough's permission. So I, I hesitate. Do, I, do, I, hesitate. I do not recall, Mr. I, Flynn. I hesitate you to just go about and do what you want to do without running it through the borough manager. Uh, it's a good idea, but we have insurance problems that we have to attend to as borough council, as representatives of the borough. We can't have parks, friends, uh, going off and doing what they think is best without the director of public works and the uh, borough manager. Uh, understood, but I, Mr. Flynn, I will tell you that the, the current public works director is, is wonderful. Previous one, right before him, I had one phone call with him and he couldn't have been less interested in talking with me about anything. So it was a problem with, with staff engagement. The, the, uh, I, uh, I, I don't want to dispute the, the, the previous person, but what I would like to tell all the friends of the different parks, you, you can't be vigilante in publicly owned properties without going, I, as I feel, without going through the borough manager or the, the public works director, because God forbid, somebody hits a rock and kills a kid on uh, Marshall Street, then that insurance company that you have in your hand is only secondary because we're primary. So it's very important that, that, that we, we do the right thing. And I do agree that uh, we don't need to cut the parks in July and August because there's there's no grass. Right. Uh, but uh, it, we we got to make sure we stay inside the box. Understood. And hopefully, and hopefully, moving forward, we can do yeah. that, and we we have co and we will have true cooperation with the borough. Don't move forward unless you talk to the borough manager because he's the chief executive of the borough. I will take that advice. Thank you. Thank you. And I think the partnership with the uh, friends of groups for the different parks is is a really valuable contribution to the to the the vision and maintenance of the of the parks and and everything that we want to do. So I, I look at it as a really great partnership. Thank you, Sean. Well, it's an it's an awesome partnership. I'm just worried about liabilities of 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 us doing what you know, we think is for best sure. in our little sector. So. One question that we have timing wise, though, is, um, you know, the RFP is being prepared for 2023. Um, we have we have leaves falling 2022 that um, that we're going to have to address again. And I think both friends, but at least uh, friends of Marshall Square Park and friends of Everhart Park are prepared to pay for it privately. Although um, I will say friends of Everhart Park membership does not welcome my saying this kind of thing <laughs> because they believe the borough ought to maintain the parks. Yeah, and, and, um, and so they say, why are we fundraising to pay for what the borough ought to be paying for? But the question is, you know, procurement, I understand that. And, and, um, but I also think that a municipality has, has a fair bit of leeway when it comes to maintenance as opposed to capital projects and bidding. So um, I hope that um, that funding can be found and maybe we can work out a process now. We've got several months, you know, because it's the, the you know, it's really Thanksgiving time, early December, that, that all the leaves or enough of the leaves are down that they can be mulched. But if we do want um, to realize some savings, I think within the contract that you have right now with JHL that you can say, hey, you know, slow down. Um, let's let's cancel X number of mowings. And um, uh, I took a tour of a, just a, a riding tour of the two wastewater treatment plants. And um, uh, it looks to me like there's some excess mowing going on there unless um, there's some regulatory reason why it has to be three inches tall 50 feet out from the chain lake fence i mean i think it's just like you know super maintenance um, but i you know i think you can mow that once a month instead of once a week 
and um, you know we pay more for mowing the sewer plants than we do for mowing the parks um, per acre. So uh, to to your point, and Mr. McCoy, please excuse me. To your point, um, the the two gentlemen that run our sewer treatment plants do an excellent excellent job of keeping them immaculate. You know, yeah, because they have to worry about the DEP and the EPA and whatever other letters to come can drive through there. But to your point, I think Mr. Edwards and Mr. Uh, Metric have heard you say that maybe we should reach out to our current lawn mowing guy and tell him to take uh, August off and uh, beginning of September off because the grass is nothing but dust in most of the parks at this point. Right, and actually in the parks, they'll buzz the perimeter and go home because mm -hmm. There's no grass to cut down anyway. Right. Yeah. They, they, I think they've. I think both gentlemen have heard your okay. your request. Huh. And Mr. Bidell, I wasn't personally picking on you. It was just the fact that the uh, 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 Marshall Square Park and Neverhart Park and Hoops Park are historic parks. Do a phenomenal job for our, for our town, uh, and we wholly support them. I'm just worried about liabilities of uh, somebody off the cuff saying they got hurt that maybe they didn't even get hurt you know so it, it's important that that we clarify everything through mr edwards and mr metric point taken but it was like i said extreme personal frustration oh i with I, getting I, at least two feet of burrow leaves off of the park covering my sidewalks and i was told well we're not collecting them anymore bag them and then we'll come get them that to me is a completely unacceptable answer, and it's really kind of you know, it, it, it's the land, the landowner's not taking care of the property correctly. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you so I guess my tonight. my recommendation is between Mr. Metric and Mr. Edwards coming up with uh, you know recommendations for for this because obviously you're talking about four of the parks, but obviously there's an equity issue because we have. Other parks that I, I don't know, there are specific issues, trees, but um, they also deserve to have to be considered in this this as well. And just to say, I care about all the parks. Thank you so much for the friends groups. I'm going to worry about the little parks. Of course, I want mulching in Kathy McBradney, which the leaves are enormous, but all the little parks need as, this as much as possible. I completely understand that there are limitations, but please try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to item number three, discuss on item A, public works report. Don Edwards, public works director, and good evening. Um, besides our usual operations and maintenance, Public Works worked on some special projects that are shown in our monthly report. I would like to spotlight a few of these projects. Under the borough manager supervision, we explored grant funding opportunities for capital improvement projects. We met with the deputy director of the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, Patty Elkis, who identified federal and state grant funding opportunities for projects such as replacing brick storm sewers, and performing a drainage study for Goose, uh, Goose Creek. Additionally, uh, Ms. Elkis advised us that she will be hiring two grant funding navigators, and she offered to allow the borough to use their services at no cost, uh, including assistance with grant application writing. Another potential project is to improve the way uh, finding signs in the borough. During the past month, we did an inventory of the existing wayfinding signs. We added them to our GIS uh, mapping system. Uh, finally, uh, we repaired sinkholes that are a systemic problem in the borough. Uh, instead of using an outside contractor, we cost effectively use public works personnel and equipment to make the repairs. At the end of the monthly report are photos of the repair at Linden and Walnut Streets. So, yep, that's the first one. That's uh, the an old brick inlet, um, the sinkhole, there was nothing underneath it. It was just kind of suspended. <clears throat> so that was the first step, we took it out. Um, that's a picture of the finished, uh, semi-finished project. We still need to do some uh, black topping. Uh, 
this right here uh, as we were installing the uh, the inlet. And um, this right here is the back filling for the new pipe. It was a broken pipe and the, the soil and the stone was getting into it. Uh, here's our guys um, putting things together. Uh, we had to, like I said, we had to replace a hole in the pipe and this is how we did it. Uh, this successful project was performed under the supervision of assistant director, Don Anderson. By using in-house resources, we probably saved about $20,000. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Appreciate uh, saving twenty thousand dollars for us. Um, I guess one of the things that you know, I was surprised that how systemic the sinkholes are. I was not aware that that you know how many times a, a month or a quarter are, are you fixing these? Yeah, I, I think I had been here three weeks, and there was just one after another that was popping up, and I was wondering how bad it was. I'm happy to say that it has slowed down. But all the bricks uh, sewers out there, you know, the bricks are kind of dislodging over time. And um, and then there's some other reasons, too. We have a uh, terracotta clay pipes out there. They're kind of fragile. Um, so, I mean, there's a need there. And but I'm really happy to say that we're um, we're repairing more than are coming in right now. So we're for now, we're, we're staying ahead of it. Guess you know what's going to be in the budget next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Mr. McCoy, Thank you very I have a much. question for you, yes, Mr. Edwards. The uh, the wayfinding signs, yes. the very large ones are missing uh, around the borough. Oh. Uh, in front of St. Agnes, in front of Spencer, uh, Spence, social, the, the, the social. The, they're the ones that look like four by eight sheets of, of metal. Uh, there's quite a few. Of the, I think there's three or four of them missing around the borough. Okay. And we also promised the Uptown Theater uh, that we were going to put decals on our all of our our wayfinding signs, and I, I don't know where we stand with that, but uh, it's starting to get the cooler weather where you can actually work outside and do those types of things. Yeah, uh, I mean, just to add to what I had said before, going to what you just said, um, I mean, we have signs out there that might have, that are relatively big, and, and they might have one thing on there, you know, senior center this way. Well, I mean, one, one improvement could be to add other attractions. You know, so that's one thing. The second is um, adding signs, or in this case, maybe replacing what was there. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. Um, so uh, we're, this is just kind of early right now, but uh, I think we're going to start considering things like that. And I also think it's going to be really cost effective because um, I, I really don't think it would involve um, an outside consultant. And um, it's something where it's, I think it's just going to be a matter of purchasing signs, drilling holes, you know, anchoring it the way it should be. And um, I, I think uh, I would call that low hanging fruit, you know, where you really can make an improvement. Decals on the signs look like they're pretty easily put on, uh, you know, for the, for, the, for the locations and destinations. Yeah. Yes. You know, make a local place here, the Goshen Sign Company can make the strips and clean the sign and just put it on and take the, the backing off and it's there. So yeah, we have great. quality people in public works that could handle that. Yeah, sounds yeah. great. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. To item 3B, the wastewater report. Hello, Mike Finley, wastewater superintendent. Um, at the Taylor Run plant right now, we are just getting done our, our uh, filtration system. There's a few odds and ends they have to finish, but um, it's pretty much complete. We're waiting for the startup. It's gonna happen probably in the next week or two. They're gonna show us how to operate it and check everything out. Um, we had our annual DEP plant inspection last week in July. Everything went well, no violations. Uh, right now, we're doing a lot of outside painting and pressure washing to make our plants look even better than um, my friends say, you know, but uh, Goose Creek, they're working on the um, sluice gates, re, uh, disassembly, installing bearings, re, reinstalling, doing uh, work on their final clarifier. That's almost done back in operation. And uh, two of their main pumps are being torn down and inspected and rebuilt the bearings and seals. And all the plants are, both of them are in parameters, running great, looking great. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. any questions. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment, though, from the front. Yes. Thank you very much. Move to move on to uh, 3C parks and recreation report. Well, the director is not here this evening to to fill in the details, but the, there were um, the report details certain programs and, cl and classes and events that have been held in the park this year. And Keith and I did take a starting to take our biweekly coordinations out on the road and we were looking together to put together a proposal for improvements to the hoops park pavilion to improve the appearance there and you know, it's standard maintenance but it, it kind of crosses the line from standard standard maintenance i think we're thinking about uh, having to replace the shingles on the pavilion and make some concrete improvements so there's going to be a larger cost to that The, uh, the union has requested uniforms. Uh, currently, they receive a $200 allowance uh, to purchase T-shirts and sweatshirts. Uh, there's a safety concern because employees cannot be clearly identified as public uh, as borough workers uh, with this clothing. And uh, occasionally, they need to go on private property, maybe knock on doors. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's an issue. Uh, we contacted Cintas, who is a national clothing rental company. They have a government contract that is used by government entities, including ones in Pennsylvania. We met with Cintas, who showed us slacks and shirts, which looked and felt like good quality. Uh, the shirts would include emblems with Westchester Borough and the employee's name. Uh, each uh, employee would receive two weeks of clothing. Uh, they'd wear clothing for a week, and then they'd then that would be taken away and cleaned and pressed and brought back. And then they, in that time, they would have the second week's clothing to wear. Um, we would like to supplement this uniform rental with a $100 clothing allowance down from $200. Employees could purchase T-shirts and sweatshirts that would help in the summer and winter. Uh, the T-shirts and sweatshirts would be borough approved and include Westchester Borough. The total cost for the uniform rental and $100 allowance would be slightly higher than the current uniform budget, but something that is manageable. We would like to start by renting uniforms for the Public Works Department. We met with the union and received its support for this upgrade in uniforms. And at this point, I'm not sure if we're looking for support or a decision. Uh, that part I don't know. Mr. Matrix, you want to weigh on this? We are okay as far as um, council having authorized allocated uniform dollars to cover this expenditure for the remainder of the year. We wanted you to be aware of this because I, I do think it's a, I do think it's moving in the right direction in terms of uni, uh, uniformity of appearance and and uh, for the reasons that Mr. Edwards stated. And it's something that we want to uh, implement next year. So we're, we're really just letting you know it's an informational piece and we will budget for this next year. I think that the increase might be in the one to 5% range, I believe. I'm not but it's, it's a slight. The, uh, the Sintas company, are they co-stars approved by the state of Pennsylvania? Uh, it's, they're not associated with co-stars. They have a contract of, uh, a government contract in Virginia that um, is piggybacked by um, numerous um, government entities, uh, including some cities in Pennsylvania. Thank you. I think this is a wonderful move and thank you for bringing it to our attention. You're welcome. And something to, besides the safety part of this, I also think that high quality organization like Westchester Borough, you know, deserves to have employees that represent it well. Dress for success. There you go. I wouldn't wear a tie if I wasn't successful. Thank you. I have one question for you, sort of unrelated, because I, I noticed on 202 that I, I, I don't know if it was PennDOT contractor had a tent over the, the pit they were working in. I mean, obviously it was great for them on this day. I felt bad they had to be working when it was 100 degrees and probably 120 in the, the middle of 202, but 
Do we do similar things when our folks are out? Uh, wasn't in the pictures, but we had a tent also. And um, <clears throat> especially the, the hottest day, um, we got them Gatorade. Great, so. thanks. We'll move on to number four action item to approve the July 2022 meeting minutes. Approved. Moving on to five, any other business? Seeing none, we will adjourn this meeting at uh, 7.04. Thank you.